Hi, I'm Eileen Chapman and I live here in Asbury Park. I lived here since 1974. I live with my husband Tom and I've raised my three children here. I've always been an active part of my community. I volunteered for almost any committee there was, whether it's Little League, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, while the kids were growing up. Uh, monitor for school and for lunchroom and whatever there was available to do, I did it. And um, I routinely attended council meetings, planning board meetings, and um, ran for election in 2016, along with Yvonne Clayton and Amy Quinn. And we were elected to serve a four year term in Asbury Park. We are up for re-election. So currently I am the director of the Bruce Springsteen Archives and Center for American Music at Monmouth University. That's my day job. I also serve on the Wesley Lake Commission I began the Sunset Lake Commission. I'm on the Recreation Commission, Quality of Life, and the Green Team. I'm also uh, on the board of the Asbury Park Music Foundation, the Asbury Park Historical Society, the Asbury Park Museum, and Asbury Angels. Uh, my father was city manager back in the early 70s for about seven years and really instilled in me a love and passion for this city. So here I am and hoping to be reelected. Our businesses are an essential part of the Asbury Park landscape. They give entrepreneurs the opportunity to live their dream. They provide an identity to our city and they provide jobs for local citizens. Our business people are often also very involved with our community. They serve on committees, they host fundraisers, they do they make contributions to different organizations. In fact, just recently, Kathy Kelly from Paranormal put together the Asbury Park Dinner Table to make sure that people were fed through this pandemic and restaurants were supported. For many years, Asbury Park's businesses struggled, but for now we have uh, a vibrant downtown and a, a lively oceanfront, and we have shops opening along Main Street and in other parts of town. It's been challenging through this pandemic, but we worked with businesses to help them remain open. So we immediately, as soon as this pandemic hit, we immediately knew that we needed to make steps, um, take steps and set policies and allow businesses to remain open through however many months this pandemic would occur. So we did things like we met with businesses we allowed them to take retail and restaurants out into the sidewalks and streets. We closed city streets. We provided uh, pickup uh, locations for food and drop off locations for supplies. And we waived the cafe license fees for restaurants and really worked with them to make sure that all their needs were met. We're also in constant contact with state and local officials for guidelines. And we talk to other elected officials from other towns to see what's working for them, what's not working for them. And now as we're moving into colder weather, we provided uh, restaurants and retail shops with lists of approved tents and um, heaters. And we're also working on free parking initiatives through holiday parking. We've recently distributed a survey to the businesses to help them meet their needs. And we're going to keep changing our policies as long as we need to in order for businesses to remain open and until this pandemic is over. I think that one, one of our most significant initiatives that we've accomplished in the last four years is the $19 million project for redesigning Main Street for both pedestrians, vehicular traffic, and anyone who moves throughout our town. These include uh, drainage options, curb cuts, ADA compliant uh, traffic signals, um, repaved roads, sidewalk, and everything needed for all people to be able to move around our city. We've worked with the Asbury Park Complete Streets Coalition to identify different modes of, of transportation and pedestrian walkways and really um, educate us on what's the best way to move people safely throughout our city, uh, including people with disabilities.
We've created miles of bike lanes and we're now creating bike lanes in um, protected bike lanes in areas where we have angled parking. And during the summer months, we put a pilot program into place where we were closing specific streets to vehicular traffic in order for people to get out, get into the streets, you know, ride their bikes, play, use skateboards, you know, whatever, whatever it is they would like to do without being in the middle of vehicular traffic. Uh, now that our bike and scooter share program are on hold, we have created a partnership with Easy Ride in order to provide free transportation to all of our residents for medical appointments and grocery shopping. And these are th initiatives that we're going to be looking for grants to continue even beyond the pandemic. Uh, we've installed 20 upgraded traffic lights that are ADA compliant to people with low visibility. We've partnered with the Christopher and Dana Ree Foundation to make sure that um, all of our areas throughout the city, including our beaches, boardwalks, and businesses are ADA compliant and available for all. And we look forward to restarting our bike and scooter share program when this is all over. You know, Asbury Park is only a mile by a mile, so it is really maneuverable for everyone, and we want to make sure that everyone has access. Good police and community relations are vital to the health and safety of our community and to any community. Our police officers need to rely on our residents for cooperation and our residents need to be able to trust our police officers. It's up to us as elected officials to continue to research best practices, policies, and opportunities for strengthening relationships between our residents and our police officers. In our Faulkner form of government, we are legally not permitted to reach out to the police officers, to the chief of police, or actually to any city staff and ask questions or give direction. What we can do is to assess training procedures and make certain that there's participation in them. We review procedures and policies. We review interactions and outcomes. It's our responsibility to set policies that are meaningful and constructive. It's our goal to have stellar relationships between our police and our residents. And, you know, do we relay these goals to our city manager? Absolutely, all the time, because it's the role of the city manager to work with the police to bring our wishes forward. I think we've been successful in shifting the narrow focus of crime prevention to a broader focus of community relationships and, and health. It's also important for pol our police officers to interact with our community, and they do that so often. So our police officers go to National Night Out, they go to all the community days, they do trunk or treat, they give away bicycle helmets and bike lights, and they go to schools and interact with the kids. They read books to the kids. They give tours of the police department. And really, they any opportunity they, can to, they have to interact, they do. They've started the Coffee with the Cop, which has been very successful. It brings residents and police together to have meaningful com conversations. And it's also our, our responsibility to mitigate risk factors. So we need to make sure that our social services department has all the tools they need to do their job and that there's a workforce development program in place for locals to actually have jobs and that there are recreation programs available to the youth of our community. Really, this is one of the most important things that we can do is to make sure that these relationships are solid and strengthened.